Hi, this is Kevin Sender, and um, I'm the owner of Take Multimedia LLC. We're a digital media firm based on Chicagoland, and I'm here today with my client and, and friend, David Soskin, who is the owner of Dave's Decorative Painting and Custom Refinishing based out of Wilmette, Illinois. Um, one of my favorite things about doing some work for Dave and, and getting to speak to and learn from Dave as well is uh, we share a couple of things in common. Uh, for one thing, we, we both come from a very creative background and we leverage our creativity and our creative skills in this world to do business on a day-to-day -day basis. So Dave, it's uh, good to spend some time with you today. Yeah. Um, I can see already that you know, you've got a, a beautiful painting, it looks like, behind you that you're working on. I'm going to kind of give a brief synopsis. You know, Dave's specialty um, for his studio is he really specializes in uh, doing, you know, we're going to nutshell it as kitchen refinishing, but it's a much broader service than that. Um, you know, he really delves into creating uh, a feel and an atmosphere in a, a kitchen by renewing that space um, instead of, you know, replacing things in it. Um, you know, so Dave, if you want to, you know, kind of go from there and talk maybe a little bit briefly first before we dig into the creativity of it all. Um, you know, about what sort of projects you're you're most frequently working on and tell us a little bit about, you know, the, the birth of your business. We'll see where this conversation goes from there. <laughs> okay. Um, well, it, it sort of started several years ago when uh, I got off the corporate world and into back into doing something, working for myself. So I started out painting uh, different things for people, which I had done pretty much my whole life just either for myself or for customers way back when. And uh, I noticed that when I was asked to do some painting, the idea of painting people's kitchens and kitchen cabinets over to refinish them always came up. I'd be working on a job and then I'd get three other inquiries about that the same week. So I thought to myself, well, it would be a lot easier to plan if I brought this all under one roof and was able to do several kitchens at the same time. So if there's a certain amount of drying time involved, and this, there's a certain commonality to all the steps that you take that could really make it into like a production line. So that's what we did. I, I rented out a space in Wilmette. I bought some very high-end spraying equipment. Uh, I went from doing it in people's garages, where I would basically use their garage for the whole week. I'd put plastic down on the flooring, plastic all around, then I'd set up my sea horses and do uh, my saw horses and do my job. So now I have a big, nice uh, uh, spray booth that makes the jobs, you know, ten times better because you're removing any kind of overspray that would go back onto the surface of something that you're spraying. I have much higher uh, equipment, higher level equipment, and there's many applications to being able to spray something within somebody's house. Um, yeah, it's nice if you could bring it into a studio situation because there's this, you know, a certain amount of, you know, I guess, uh, intrusion in taping things off and having to paint in somebody's house. But we've actually made it in so that we're very non-intrusive in the fact that we bring a lot of the stuff to the studio and what's left, what needed to be done in somebody's house. We have certain techniques that we've developed to very, make a very small footprint on us intruding into somebody's house to get our job done. So that's essentially, you know, how I came up with uh, coming up with a, a like a, a reason for opening a studio. The biggest reason is because I'm a fine artist and that's what I love doing. And I need to uh, need it to bring both of those things together to make it work monetarily as well as time-wise. And so I've been uh, doing this now for uh, three and a half years in the studio. And uh, my studio used to be at my house. Now it's in the one facility that I have in Walmart and it's really working out well because I have time for everything now. Awesome. Okay, so um, I, tell me a little bit about what I'm looking at behind you. Um, you know, you, I know you already have, so, but I'm going to let you repeat it for the audience. Um, you know, I'd love to hear you talk a little bit about where the inspiration for that piece 
came from um, and you know a little bit of your process in putting something like that together. Okay. Well, I go on painting trips and I, 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 it's mostly the Midwest because I've been using these trips to try and improve my skills, to continue to get better at what I do. Because when you go on painting trips and you paint outside, it's not much different than a fishing trip in the sense that you got to be very prepared for any kind of weather that might come around. You got to be able to make yourself comfortable where it is that you decide that you want to paint because you see something interesting to yourself. And it's just a thing. So I've been doing it now for like 10 years, trying to improve my skills. It also gets me out of the house. It get, gives me things to a hobby to keep my mind on uh, and look at other artists and see how they do things. So what you're looking at behind me, actually it's, um, it's called Dave's Falls. And actually there's Dave's Falls in Wisconsin. There's a hero of a guy during the logging uh, uh, period when uh, there was a catastrophe and he went to help people uh, in, uh, you know, uh, in danger of drowning, uh, help them. And then in the end, he ended up drowning, saving people. So they, uh, they uh, labeled these, you know, they named the, the falls after this guy and it's in upper Wisconsin. And so in my travels, it's just one of the places along the way, but it's the most spectacular view. It's just the most amazing place to visit. So I uh, both paint there to try and get better at doing things outdoors, as well as taking lots of photo references and things to develop paintings at a future date. So what you're looking at behind me happens to be a indoor planer painting, if you will, of subject matter that I have taken and I have, uh, you know, many others that I want to do as well in this particular location. Um, I'm getting ready to go on a painting trip like in about a week or so, and uh, I'll be doing it the same way, you know, some parts of it uh, outdoors and other parts of it taking pictures for future projects. But this is what I like to do. This kind of keeps my mind on something other than just, you know, work. And um, it's certainly you, you continue to grow and there's always somebody that you can learn from. So it's a wonderful thing. Awesome. I love that piece. Um, it's just beautiful. I, I can't wait to see it in person as soon as I'm able to make it over there again. Um, you know, I, I think one thing that's really interesting to me, if you could talk a little bit and explain, you know, how in your perspective, um, do you marry your creative passion and pieces like that to, you know, when you walk into someone's home and you're talking to them about, you know, reversioning their kitchen or whatever room you may be working in, um, you know, do you feel like that has some influence in there and how do you pull from that? Um, I often go into people's homes and they have their color picked out for them and it just doesn't seem right to me. So I showed them a few examples of things that are similar to what they like, but a little bit different because maybe it goes with something else they have in the house. Maybe it's just a better color than the one they chose, but I don't tell you that you can't have yellow if you want a yellow living room. I just suggest that maybe we will look at a few different kinds of yellows and kind of boil it down into why one might be better than the other, then I have a high degree of success explaining things to people that way and allowing them to make decisions for themselves. I, I would use the color that anybody wants to choose, wants to, you know, pick, but I just like to refine things a little bit. I have a, a you know, a Bachelor of Fine Arts um, uh, in, in um, painting. Uh, I was in the commercial art business for 15 years as a graphic designer. Then that kind of left, led me into being like, you know, doing more account management kind of stuff, but I always kept my hand into the fine art aspect of things. And everything I do is always about judging color, about designs, things along those lines, both as a hobby and what I try to help people with if they need that kind of work, you know, if they need that kind of help. If they have a designer and the designer is very specific about what they're looking for, I can work that as well. Not a problem. Yeah, I think it's probably fair to say, and definitely in many of the before and after 
photos that I've seen of your work that there's a, a great deal that can be um, you know, kind of customized and, and there's flair in the details too, right? Um, yeah. You know, people don't always think of different ways to, for instance, you know, maybe pinstripe trim or um, you know, I've seen you do some, some really creative things with um, backwashes and, um, you know, various other elements within a, a kitchen or a room, for instance, that you know, a, a homeowner may not consider or, or may not even be aware of as an option. Right, right. That's, you know, I've done a lot of like, you know, um, decorative type of painting, you know, that used to be, you know, more fashionable than it is exactly right now. But since those products are so, um, professional in their quality, I'm sure that a variety of version of decorative painting is going to come around the corner again. I don't know what. You know, like a few years ago, I was doing Venetian plaster for people. Right now, the boss is doing kitchen cabinets. I think you should put the two together and you create artwork. But, um, you know, that's just from my perspective because I, <clears throat> I see things that way, but really most people They've gone from a very clean look, from from all the, they've gone from doing the decorative type painting to a, a very clean look in their house. And now I'm seeing people are starting to add more color to that clean look. And I think that's sort of the trend. I think that's what people are doing right now. Personality, a little bit of flair. Yeah, um, exactly. I, Mix it up. See, I like seeing some of that stuff come back to myself, so. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, um, yeah, I, I, as always, I kind of enjoyed listening to you tell a little bit about your story. And, you know, we, we both share a, a unique passion for creativity. As I sit around here in my music studio where I also do quite a bit of my work. Uh -huh. um, you know, thanks for a conversation this morning. If you'd like to tell anybody watching you know, how they can, what they can do to get in touch with you mm -hmm. um, or where they can find your, your studio. Okay, well, uh, as Kevin mentioned earlier, the name of my company is kind of long. Dave's Decorative Painting and Custom Refinishing in Wilmette, Illinois. You can also look at my website, which is davidsoskin.com. The last name is spelled S-O-S-K-I-N. And that gives you a good idea of what we've been doing for the last several years. Um, and, um, you know, if you're interested, you can contact me, I guess, through the website. That would be a good way of doing it. Okay. Uh, what's your phone number, uh, number up there at the studio as well? 847-772-4484. And that's at, uh, that's at Wilmette, Illinois. All right. Well, thank you very much, Dave, for spending a little bit of time sharing with us this morning. And once again, you know, I, I love that, that painting you're working on right now. <laughs> thank um, you so much. And that's we'll catch up again soon. Sounds good. Thank you, Kevin.